Oh, hey guys. Yeah, I sound a little stuffed up. I just took an allergy pill. I'm having, <laughs> I'm right mid allergy attack right now. I just sneezed 18 times. I'm like that guy from The Simpsons. Every time he hiccuped, he said, kill me. So, why am I sneezing? Because everything's blooming. So, I want to take some photos and just show you guys. Look at all the lilies. We've got every different color and kind here in my yard. The deer have not been here eating the flowers, which they usually do. Um, I have not seen a, a baby deer, a fawn, yet this year. So, is that because... I mean, Gage does keep them out of the yard a little bit more, but usually if I get up at 4 or 5 in the morning and I look out in the backyard, you see them running around and playing. They Actually, they're like kids. They come out and they play. And then as soon as the sun comes up and it kind of gets dangerous for them, they disappear back into the forest. I haven't seen that this year. So I just wanted to give you guys a channel update, show you some cool photos of the flowers. Everything's growing great. Um, we are missing one... I told my wife that the deer did get uh, the one set of lilies right there in that corner. See the blank spot? Yeah, it was kind of my fault. I was whippersnipping. <laughs> yeah, and somebody came in my driveway and I looked up. And literally I looked down just in time to see the lily go. So I threw it in the swamp and my wife said, Geez, you know, that's suspicious that they ate the stalk and all. Because usually... The deer will eat the lilies just about the day before they bloom, and they only eat the flower part. And I said, I don't know, honey, that was one hungry deer. But meanwhile, it was this guy. <laughs>
an amazing bird. And it's too bad he gets a, a bad rap because he's pretty cool. I'll show you guys what a difference the spotting scope makes. You're seeing the view there from the spotting scope 60 times. I've also taken images with this 500 millimeter lens zoomed all the way in with a crop sensor camera. So that's 750 millimeters and I'll show you how tiny the bird is on the photograph from this versus being zoomed in with the scope. It's pretty amazing. I'm having trouble with summer right now that there's so much to do. I don't have enough time to do all the things I want to do. I've been meaning to get back out in the kayak. I've been meaning to get the camper trailer set up. We are going camping with the wild yam uh, next week. So, yeah, in a week from now. So this week I'm here. Next week we're gone camping. Um, I've got friends coming down from Sudbury. I was in Sudbury last week. I golfed nine holes this morning. I golfed 18 the day before, 18 the day before. Uh, you know, I'm trying to get some fishing in. There's just so much to do and not enough time to do it all that I'm, you know, I'm really, I have other plans. I have a trip planned that I want to show you guys. I want to take you to a place that I have not been in 25 years. Just take you to a river that I guarantee you probably this many people or less have been to this section of river when I was a kid, I just grabbed my rod and away we'd go. You know, full day hiking up, all uphill, little mini waterfalls all the way, full of speckled trout, in the middle of nowhere. I want to go back as a 47 year old and just say, hey, you know, is this as spectacular as I remember? I want to share it with you guys. And I remember it was a very arduous trip to get in there as a teenager. So, you know, can I do it at 47? We can find out, you know, even if I only make it halfway. It's still, I want to show you guys because it's places here in Canada, wild country that people just don't go. They're just, you know, Canadians are di no different than Americans, okay? The Canadians want to live in their little towns and their little cities. They don't want to go out in the bush and explore. I'm the rare breed that does that. And I can show you guys things in places that nobody else is going to. And I feel I've not been reaching that potential, not doing it. I want to take the kayak. I've got a handful of little lakes uh, dozens of little lakes that are, you know, not very big. Quarter mile, half mile across, full of trout, full of great fishing. I just have to get out there and do it. I may lie about the names of these places because, you know, once you post that, everybody's going to be there and uh, we don't need that, right? These are secret places that I found exploring when I was a kid because we didn't have this technology when we were a kid. You know, you didn't look on Google Maps. There was no Google, right? You went out, you asked Grandpa, hey, where does this watershed lead to? You know, this river system, tell me about it. And word of mouth and getting out and actually exploring taught me where these places were. Actually, I can show you guys some trail camera footage too, which I've had kicking around on the computer for a while we haven't done anything with. So you guys can check that out.
All right, so he's not here to borrow money. He got this in the paper, uh, this paper in the mail, and uh, it's on what? Back in the bay. And it says volume three, issue two. And it's inside this issue. Cloud two died in the line of OPP duty. And here it says, cover photo, North Bay OPP police dog Cloud two is a Canadian legend earning national acclaim and honors before and after being killed in the line of duty to help and the Donald Kelly manhunt in 1975. So here's the cover of that magazine that dad dropped off and it's Cloud 2 from back in 1976. Uh, so that's how much he meant to the community. Um, you know, 400 people showed up for his police dog service funeral, etc. But uh, I read the article in here and it's the same crap that we had you know the lies <laughs> or so i mean hey we're looking at photographs i showed you guys of donald kelly with injuries all up his arm broken arm from where they said cloud grabbed him and that was reported right the first day that donald kelly went uh, to the hospital and then after that they all said no he wasn't grabbed by the arm he was grabbed by the leg and even in this article here they go out of their way by making the point of saying the rifle was out of reach so cloud grabbed him by the leg but these dogs are trained to grab somebody by the arm if they have a gun. And Donald Kelly had a gun. So I call a crock a BS when I hear it. But it's too bad. Either way, the dog died. I believe he was shot by his own handlers as they tried to shoot Donald Kelly. And that's what Donald Kelly claimed, you know. Anyway, so it was a, you know, just a, a cool kind of weird coincidence that Dad stopped by with that uh, magazine. So... Anyway, I forget what else we talked about, guys, because I just spent an hour talking with Dad. So that's the update, I guess. You guys know what's coming up on the channel. And I'll catch you guys soon in the next adventure.